All right, now I'd like to walk you through the SMTP Remote Photo Logger application. I'll begin by opening the callback VI called Acquire, Image, and Send. Do a Control E to open the block diagram. I'm using the Academic Rio's onboard LED0 to indicate when exactly we are in this callback VI. The, v or the LED is enabled when you begin execution and then it's disabled at the conclusion of the VI. This VI makes use of the system date and time of Academic Rio that's located under the timing sub palette. This timestamp is used for the acquired image and the images are acquired with this file name stored on the USB thumb drive in JPEG format and the timestamp is also used to retrieve the date and time which are inserted in these two places of the email message body. Also draw your attention to this option that allows the seconds to be displayed as well. Now the file name is converted from a string into a path. This path is used to write out the JPEG file to disk. This single path needs to be converted into array format before connecting to the set attachments VI. That's because it can handle multiple file attachments. The email setup area is located over here. The bold faced elements are those that you need to customize and you can certainly adjust the others as well. All right, let's get started forming the SMTP email in stages. Go to Data Communication, Protocols, SMTP Email. All of the VIs that we need are in this palette. The session begins with the Open Handle VI, and I've got the, enabled, or the option enabled for TLS Secured Email. This produces a handle to the session, which is then used by all subsequent VIs. Now, in general, an email is constructed as follows. We set the recipients, set the message body, attach any files that might be required, and optionally set headers associated with the email, and then finally send the email and then close the session. Let's take a look at these in a little bit more detail. Set recipients. We have three string arrays for two, the CC and the blind CC fields. The CC and BCC fields are optional. I have a single recipient, which I turn into a single element array because set recipients requires a string array. Let's look at set message. It needs a subject and a body text. It can either be plain text or if you include the HTML codes it will transmit that accordingly. Set attachments needs an array of file paths. Therefore I'm taking this single file path and turning it into a single element array for that purpose. Set headers allows you to adjust some options for example setting the importance level in your email for example, if you wanted it to show up with the exclamation point, you can also request a delivery receipt or read receipt using this technique. Once the email is completely formed, we go ahead and actually send it with the send VI and then close the session. I'd like to show you how you can view the email headers that you might be specifying inside Outlook. Click the pull down for tags and then click here for the lower right corner for message options and that the internet headers are located at the bottom. There's quite a bit. I'm scrolling down quite a ways and I look carefully and that's the header that I set. Importance is high. All right, that takes care of the functionality for this VI. One last thing. This is a requirement to make this available as a callback VI. I'm going to jump back to the front panel. This is simply a numeric control. It needs to be named ID and then linked to the icon frame up here. 
This numeric control needs to be an unsigned 8-bit integer. All right, let's close this one down and open up the main application for the remote photo logger. Here we have a front panel control for the acquisition interval in minutes and then a control to stop the application. Fairly simple. Let's begin by creating a timer-based interrupt source to periodically run the acquire image and send VI. This is creating a timer IRQ, stands for interrupt request. We have eight timers available with IDs zero through seven. We take the acquisition interval in minutes, convert that into microseconds, and then use that for the interval terminal right here. Each time that time period elapses, we invoke the callback VI by reference, and this would be the acquire image and send VI that we studied just moments ago. The timer measures this number of minutes, and when it times out, it runs the acquire and send VI, resets itself, and the process begins all over again. The interrupt-related VIs are located here. My Rio low-level interrupt, one we've been studying is create timer IQ, IRQ, and its uh, companion VI is destroy timer, so that would essentially unregister the IRQ. The callback VI reference is located right there. Right click and choose browse for path, and then select the appropriate VI. Again, in this case, it's the acquire and send VI. The icon that you've created inside that VI appears right there. Overall, the VI is three steps. First, create the interrupt sources. Second, keep the VI alive by pulling the front panel. And then when the user clicks the stop button, clear the interrupt sources. One last detail to talk about. This is register DIIRQ. This is for creating a manual interrupt source from the onboard push button. Let's take a look at the details. We have IRQ number. We have the channel name. This is where the interrupt source is uh, being derived from. Presently set to button zero, but I wanted to draw your attention to the fact that you've got four digital IO lines on the MXP port that could also be used. You can then specify the edge type that you're looking for, either falling, rising, or both edges. And then finally, you have some control over how many edges must be detected before you declare it as an interrupt. And that can be useful if you have a, a device that has a certain amount of chatter. Similar to the Create Timer IRQ, we have eight interrupt sources available, IDs 0 to 7. We take the ID and unregister that at the conclusion of the VI.